What is up, my minions? Welcome back to second installment of our college stories. Um, today is going to be a doozy, and this gameplay is from a while back. Uh, I was playing with Shaggy and Giggles, and uh, let me look at the screen, and I can't quite see who Lord Quappington. Yeah, I had to really squint and look at the screen. I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> this game is on Wake Island. I go flawless in the tank. The game ends about, uh, I would say, 65 tickets, and I get out of the tank or because it's going to blow up and I'm a bitch and don't want to die. But enough about this gameplay. Um, I'll probably chime in like I normally do because I watch my gameplay as I commentate. As this guy tries to James Bond onto my tank and RPG me and nope, he gets directly impacted with a tank shell. Welcome to Buttfuckers. Get teabagged. You're mad. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> right after I moved in with Barry, um, we instantly clicked... Um, our alarm clocks got really annoying, so we decided we devised a new method to wake ourselves up, and that was um, if our alarm clock went off for more than one minute, we were able to shoot each other with airsoft guns. Now, mind you, airsoft guns, the way you might think of one as, you know, shooting little plastic pellets, you know, a little cock action, giggity, uh, and, you, and you shoot the pellet, but uh, no. These... The airsoft gun that we used was a CO2 compressed uh, BB pellet, and I do believe that I still have one lodged in my knee, much near, not the same knee as my the arrow to the knee, but uh, literal arrow to the knee, but uh, it still, it hurt like a bitch, and we instantly got up, and there was laughter, and then he, we usually fell back asleep, but, <laughs> and uh, let's not mention the parties, uh, one time we had a party, and um, I went and spent about $150 buying black lights, uh, glow in the dark glue and glitter, and I don't know why Giggity just popped up on the screen. I, I'm dumb. Um, oh wait, that this is like my third time doing a commentary over this because I couldn't really get it right the first couple of times. Um, I'll just leave the Giggity in there, fuck it. Um, but yeah, I spent all that money on all that shit, and we had a huge party in my room. It was a dry, it's a dry campus, but. Uh, you know, my freshman year, the they were all pretty cool, and as long as we kept it in our room and didn't spill out into the halls or whatever, they were pretty chill about it. So we got really fucked up and um, got crazy drunk and pretty much just did whatever we wanted to do. Like, uh, I just remember waking up. I woke up with this really pretty girl. Uh, we're really good friends now, but I don't remember what we did. She says we didn't do anything, but... You know, peeing in two different directions in the morning kind of was a little the uh, hintity hint hint that we, uh, <coughs> you know. But um, it soon came to realize that after all our parties and all the girls that, you know, came to our room to hang out with us that uh, they would end up eventually leaving shit behind. And we <laughs> we started a wall of shame. Now, the wall of shame was we would put everything on the back of our door that girls left behind. And I don't remember, I, I, I ended up getting booted because of for alcohol violations because I'm a badass like that. But he told me by the end of the semester that we had about seven or eight panties, about five bras, a pocketbook that was empty. We don't know why an empty pocketbook ended up. I probably stole it and hammered one night. And um, I think that's about it. I think he said a cell phone, but I'm pretty sure we ended up finding who that belonged to. But um, so after this is moving on, after the whole situation with, you know, how Barry saved my life and whatever, I, I got really, like, you know, messed up from that because, like, uh, my head, you know, had a lot of post-concussion syndrome stuff. So I really, really solved all that by drinking a lot with my friends. I did become an alcohol. I didn't become an alcoholic, but I definitely drank a little more than I should and uh, ended up getting kicked out and... When they were kicking me out, I had an ottoman, and it it was a screw on. It had a screw on top, and inside were about 150 beer cans. And from that party, my buddy Pat's girlfriend, who was 17, she couldn't, she wasn't allowed to sign in. So for we had our catcher's bag, baseball gear. So we just went out in the park and went and put his girlfriend in the bag, and I carried her up stairs. We snuck her in that way. It was pretty badass, pretty pretty legit, pretty MLG pro right there. Um, <laughs> But that was a crazy night. We got hammered. I think we, I think we got like four or five thirty packs. And they opened my door, and it was the it was the RD this time. And he was just like, "Dude, this can't. I got it. No, you got to come with me." So I ended up getting booted. And 
this girl that I met in one of my classes, she was really cool, and we always hung out and went to the bars and stuff. She was my age, and she was really cute, and, um, you know, we, we were like little make-out buddies. Like, we would just make out after, you know, bars if we were drunk. I'd stay over. We never, we never did anything other than that. So she said I could move in with her, and she lived right across town. So it, was too, it wasn't too bad. But um, it quickly became really awkward when she had a boyfriend over. And, I mean, her boyfriend was really cool. Like, we, me and him were buddies. And he knew that we, you know, fooled around a little bit when she was drunk. He's like, well, I don't care if you do that. Just don't let me be here. Which is pretty chill because we still ended up doing some stuff. But, you know, she'd get really drunk and crawl into my bed and stuff. And, you know, you know, I, don't, I mean, I, I, I guarantee you that some of you aren't old enough to really know what I'm talking about or don't have enough, enough luck with the ladies. If you want, I'll do a tutorial on how to get the girls. I mean, you know, I'm a big guy, but big guy got big guy got swagger. Let me just throw that out there. You know, to my own little horn there. <laughs> um, but I did get kicked out, and um, my parents were not too thrilled. But they did understand because of what had happened to me, and um, my grandfather had recently passed away as well. Um, I did uh, almost set the record in the state of New Hampshire for getting pulled over. Uh, I got a phone call at 10.55 on October 27th of 2007 saying that my grandfather, who was pretty much like a father to me, was having a heart attack. And I, at the time, my car was a 2002 tu Subaru WRX STI with aftermarket everything. Let's, dis let's just say that she galloped, and she galloped hard. Um, I grabbed my laundry and ran out. I was, you know, hanging out with some friends. and like, oh, what's going on? I, I got to go. Um... There's a flat stretch of road. It's about an hour and 45 minute drive back to from home to school. And um, I saw a cop car and he flashed his lights and I, I flew by him. And he said, uh, and uh, I, I stopped because, you know, I, I was a criminal justice major. So I eventually stopped. He caught up to me at gunpoint. And he said, get out of the car. My words to him were shoot me or let me go. My grandfather's having a heart attack and I'm not going to miss. I'm not going to miss saying goodbye to him. So it's not good. So he went back to his car and he radioed and found out that it was legit. And he comes up to the window and says, you follow me. But let me tell you, I'm just going to tell you once how fast you were going. I got pulled over. He clocked me at 167 miles an hour on the straightaway. You can't even tell me that that's not badass. I mean, to, to love your family that much, to risk everything. I mean, every time I saw a car, I slowed it down. You know, just because it was nighttime, I could see headlights and shit. And I wasn't stupid around corners. Like, I knew what she had. I know how to drive. So he gave me a police escort pretty much the whole way. Uh, I got there at 1142, and he had passed away at 1135. I didn't get to say my goodbye, but, you know, I'll never forget that officer for helping me out, which was which was awesome of him. But uh, so I was in a rough, rough place, then getting beat up and, uh, you know, sent in the hospital and having a concussion and slight brain injury and stuff. And now I have a speech impediment. You'll always hear me stutter and. Shit like that it fucking sucks. Let me tell you about. Let me tell you what. Um, I used to have a different sounding voice, and now I don't. So it's whatever. I can be your speech impediment commentator, your favorite one, your only one, probably the only speech impediment commentator out there. Wow, I just said that really well. Um, <laughs> but moving on. So we still had. I still ended up playing baseball, and. My my team was fucking terrible. Like they were awful. I hadn't played in forever, and uh, I got my I got my at bats in and stuff. And I ended up starring, you know, being the, the first baseman and a pitcher. And I ended up hitting in like my fifth or sixth game. I hit our, I hit our college's first ever home run. And uh, after that, I hit a grand slam in my next at bat, and then went on to bat about three ninety with three home runs and about seventeen RBIs. It was like a ten game season. It was. It's not a big college, trust me. It's like a JUCO type deal. But um, I ended up winning uh, runner-up All Conference Player of the Year, and I made first team All Conference. So that was pretty sweet for a small, the smallest school with like 200 kids. So that was pretty. That was pretty badass. Um, this commentary is actually running down. I've been rambling on pretty good. I think this one went well. It was a little different than the last one. A little more peppy. But uh, next time I'll cover my. My, cover my sophomore year and new friends and a lot more exciting and I think I have another trip nope actually I'm going to cover the end of this year because I do end up moving out of that girl's house moving with another even hotter girl and then I'll jump right into um, um, sophomore year and we'll, we'll go on from there but I will let this play out in 
it's been great speak talking to you guys again my name is threads and even though i'm in a tank i still occasionally throw shit peace i'm gonna get you another tank